add that this has helped the women's movement quite a lot. Because uh, starting at the end of the 90s and still going on, now we have, uh, we have this new understanding among the uh, scarf women, especially, which says that the Quran is read by men mainly and interpreted by men mainly. So it may not be uh, the real thing, you know, or at, at least there, there, there should be a relativistic way of looking at it also, not because, again, not because of the Quran itself, but because we are looking at it and we are picking things from that. We have our own understandings of the body books. So a man's understanding and a woman's understanding may differ, especially if you are living in a paternalistic society. So that's why the, the, the scarfed women's movement is a liberating movement in Turkey. It's a liberation in the family, vis-à-vis -vis the man, vis-à-vis -vis the father, the brother, the husband, and so on. And also it has created a public sphere for the women itself. And uh, the women now are using that uh, opportunity again for themselves. Now this is the transformation of religiosity. When we come to the transformation of the community structure, and community life. Here I will mention six things, six points, and maybe that will help us to understand uh, what we mean by Muslim today. No. Uh, because we, it is, it is, as I said, it is, it is very, very difficult to box the term now. The first point is that. Can, can I just suggest that we do this for five minutes? We have an interactive. Here, because there are many people wanting to participate, and then you could complete your wisdom and survey maybe after that. So, would it be possible to have a little break in about five sure. minutes? I think that would be what everyone would like. Is that right? Yes. Okay. okay. So, uh, do you want to finish your six points now? Okay. No? okay. Give us the six points, and then let's have and a then discussion. Then okay. 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 So, the first point is that the uh, Muslim community's structure has, is becoming or has become more elastic, more porous, meaning that it's much more easier to go in and out of the Islamic community today. And that's, that's how many people from the secular community are interested now in religion and you know, they are trying themselves. They are, find, they are trying to find a way that will make them somewhat maybe religious, a health way in and out. You know. and, and we have many examples of that. For example, in Ramadan, as you know, we have to fast 30 days, but we have so many people today who, who fast only five days, three days, one week, you know, and they are happy with that. They think that they have done something. They are in the circle of religiosity, according to their own you know, value system. So, the Islamic community has become more inviting for the outsiders. It, it has become much more easy today to be a religious person or to, to be pious, to be Muslim, and so on. Second point, plurality is accepted as normal. And Tolerance within the Islamic community is increasing, again from the surveys. We have different kinds of understanding of religiosity and it is accepted as normal. Third, there is a new phenomenon which you may call hybridization and it is seen in some of the families. And again, this is the first time in history, probably. We have families now which are half religious and half not. So some of the kids are religious, the others are secular, maybe atheist even, and also the old generation as well. We have, we have divisions within the families, but the families are kept intact. So this is a very, very new phenomenon. The fourth, the choice of living districts are pluralized. Now in the 90s, we were 
different districts for seculars and Muslims, you know, different parts of the cities. Now it's not like that anymore. They are neighbors, uh, they are sharing the same you know, apartment houses and so on, and they are using more or less the same kind of furniture. They are sending their kids to the same kind of schools, all learning English, and so on. So there is again a gray area in terms of lifestyles and intermingling of some of the secular <coughs> and some of the uh, Muslims. Of course, we have still a bulk of seculars who are totally away from religious. And also, we have a bulk of the uh, Muslims who are away from secularism. But the new thing, the dynamism that is brought by our party, is this gray area. And I will, I will tell you why it is such a strength in, in a few moments. Now, fifth, family is, mar, is much more important than state and religion today. In the surveys, when you ask which of these three institutions are, is more important, state, religion, and family, the answer is by far family. So even the religious people are not saying that religion is more important than family. And the sixth from the economic field, let me say, we have a midway solution between communitarianism and with the necessities of business life. We have an economic individualism now in the Muslim community, but also an inclination to stay in the community networks. So we have paternalism on the one side, being in the networks, going uh, again, uh, going through the networks in order to find, for example, partners and so on, but at the same time acting as a kind of a capitalist, quote unquote, uh, economic individual. But this, this is, these are the six points. And, uh, you know, right. I think uh, Mr. Malfman is, of course, as you know, advisor to uh, Prime Minister Malfman. Uh,